Okay, welcome students. Is my voice clear and audible to all of you? Please write down in chat box. Is my voice clear and audible to all of you? Write down in chat box. We are today going to discuss on models of occupation. So still many students are joining. I'm waiting for all of you. Is my voice clear and audible to all of you? Please write down in chat box. Okay, yes. Yes, very good afternoon. Very good afternoon to all of you. I'm getting reply that my voice is clear and audible. Okay, my voice is clear and audible to all of you. Yes, I'm getting reply. Yes, from so many students. So I welcome all of you. Still many students are joining. By the time we are going to start uh, this discussion, that is models on occupation. So that is that is being frequently asked in your theory class as well as in your practical class. In theory class, different occupational diseases are being asked as short note or as long question. As well as in practical class, uh, different models can be asked in your viva as well as in spotting you have to write description or, or questions asked uh, based on the spotting models given to you in occupational disease so can you give me the examples what are some uh, occupational disease do you know give me the examples of occupational disease that you know write down the examples of occupational disease that you know write down in chat box What occupational disease that you know? Please write down in chat box. Yes, I'm getting reply. Asbestosis, silicosis, okay. Silicosis, fibrosis. Fibrosis is not a disease. Fibrosis it is a pathological, pathognomic sign. Silicosis, pneumoconiosis, asbestosis. Yes, very nice. Asthma, not typically occupational disease, but uh, because of the occupational exposure, it may aggravate. <clears throat> Inform your colleague that our class has been started. So to join as early as possible, to join right now, inform your colleague. Yes, carbon accumulation in local mine. So because of this carbon accumulation, that is coal accumulation in coal mine, which disease can be there? Yes, pneumoconiosis. Inform your colleagues to join the class. Inform your colleagues to join the class. Still 34 students are there. So many students are remaining. Inform your colleague that our class has been started. We are going to discuss important things. I will give you the demonstration, online demonstration also. So it will be interesting for all, all of you. Entry courses, yes. So now, we will be discussing let me maximize the screen yes now you are able to see the presentation also okay so in models of occupation uh, you have already told about uh, disease that disease we are going to focus actually that is of theoretical part in your theory class this disease has been discussed extensively uh, we are going to mostly focus on the models which are present in our museum as well as some of the models which are being frequently asked in your spotting as well as in viva. Again, it is based on your theory class, but uh, you have to identify them in your spotting exam. And uh, we will discuss that theory part a uh, little bit also. So what are our learning objective? We are going to see what is occupational health. First of all, occupational health then important thing that is hazard versus risk. Let me select the pointer. So hazard versus risk, then different types of the hazards, different types of hazards and occupational models, which include two types, two types of different occupational models that we are going to cover. Uh, that is dust, different dust like coal dust, silica, asbestos dust and cotton dust. In your exam, in viva this dust will be kept in front of you in your table viva you have to identify and the questions will be based on 
your identification of the dust as well as this dust can be kept in your spotting also and you have the questions will be based on this dust and different ppe different personal protective equipment nowadays you are hearing this term frequently because of the covid 19 disease so uh, we are keeping the covid aside for this purpose and we will be focusing on the personal protective equipment which are used in uh, occupations particularly in industries particularly in industries so ear muff ear plug mask helmet gum boot safety shoes etc personal protective equipment this so these two types of models dust and ppe that we are going to focus upon it but before that but before that uh, we are going to see some basic information about the occupational health and different type of hazard let me see that how many students are online so 42 students still so many students are remaining inform your colleague inform your colleague that our class has been started and it is very interesting to attend this live class you will be gaining knowledge definitely i'm sure so first of all occupational health uh, joint committee of ilo what is full form of ilo can you write down in chat box what is full form of ilo who you already know what is ilo in your uh, syllabus international health one of the chapter is on international health and you will find this who unicef uh, etc in international health so what is ilo somebody have replied uh, pharyngitis is pharyngitis occupational disease so what is full form of ilo write down in chat box who you know very well yes i am getting reply international labor organization okay so according to ilo and who this occupational health is promotion promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical mental and social well being of the workers in all occupation so as you know the who definition of the health it typically fits in this occupational health so one simple definition of the health you as already know that is uh, we have previously discussed also so according to the who definition this occupational health is also similar here the component like physical component mental component social component these are included but for whom for the workers in occupation for the workers in occupation so promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of the health this physical mental and social health in occupation so so there are the guidelines there are the guidance there are the act which guides that the highest how this highest level of the occupational health can be maintained what are the modification in industry that need to be what are the preventive measures that should be carried out in uh, industry as well as from the for the personal point of view for the worker point of view that this factory act and other guidelines are already available to guide this occupational health another thing is protection of the worker in their employment from the risk resulting from factors which lead to adverse health effect so in employment during their work during their duty hours so whatever the risk are present that we are going to discuss also so protection of the workers from this risk which is arising out of their work arising out of their employment employment so during duty hours they should be protected from all the risks as you know that industries were having so many risks so many types of the hazards we are going to discuss so from this hazard there there can be exposure there can be it can lead to uh, ill health and prevention of the ill health that is there in occupational health guideline so that is in short uh, we can uh, say that adaptation of the work to the man and of each man to his job whatever we are doing adaptation to, work, to the man uh, one way we can call uh, that is different from this that, that uh, because of this uh, lockdown restriction we are taking this live class so we are adapted to this live class nowadays so adaptation of the work to of the work to the man and each man to his job that is also a sweet line to say about the occupational health okay let me check how many students are online 51 uh, we have crossed 50 mark okay nice we are still waiting still all the students are allowed so now we need to understand hazard versus risk 
there are two different terminology hazard and risk these are being interchangeably used many a times there is a little difference there is a difference between the, these two terminologies so that we are going to see so hazard is potential source of harm in industry in occupation so what are the source sources of the harm these are the hazards suppose physical hazards are there chemical hazards are there because of the chemicals because of the hydrocarbons or whichever chemicals or acids which are used these acids are the source of harm so noise physical if we talk about the physical hazard then it is noise noise is physical hazard so source of the harm or adverse health effect on a person or to a different group of the person so mainly mainly we have to focus that is source of the harm is called as hazard or simply speaking something that can cause harm if not controlled if it is not controlled it can cause harm suppose noise is not controlled then it can cause harm so that is hazard now risk so remember that risk is the likelihood likelihood that a person may be harmed so again here there is difference hazard is source of harm and risk is likelihood that a person may be harmed or suffer adverse health effect if exposed to the hazard so in occupational model in pp we are going to discuss about the pp these are to prevent the risk from the hazard these are going to decrease the risk of the hazard so again i repeat hazard is source of harm while risk is likelihood that a person will be harmed so remember this difference very well this is very important term to be remembered we will understand with the help of this example suppose there is a road in the road there is a hole hole there is a hole so this is a hazard presence of this hole in the road is hazard and uh, there is always risk that person may fall out into this road without watching or with, with by unknowingly and you can notice that here it is been barricaded that that there is a there is a barrier there is a barrier again in this photograph you can see that this, there is a barrier this barrier decrease the risk of any person or any vehicle from falling down into the this potential hazard source so this is the source source is hazard so this is the source this is hazard and this prevention this barricade this barrier this decrease that is decrease the risk so again this can be understood with this photograph so different types of the occupational hazards are there as you know that physical hazards chemical hazard biological hazard nowadays biological hazard uh, it is being the talk of the town mechanical hazard and psychological hazard so we will discuss little bit on this hazards because we have to focus mainly on the models so can you name me uh, what are different physical hazards what are different physical hazard or any type of the hazard from this slide any type of the hazard you can name physical chemical biological example of any type of the hazards head down in chat box head down in chat box any type of the hazard from this slide physical hazard chemical hazard or this biological you can head down in chat box <clears throat> example of the hazards yes thermal loud noise noise is physical hazard yes thermal that is also heat or cold that is also physical hazard then any other example ask your colleague to join because this session is going to be interesting 54 students are there radiation hazards yes very nice bacillus anthrax is example of the biological hazard electrical hazard yes industrial waste any other hazard i am waiting for reply so many students have answered so we are going to discuss little bit upon this hazards so physical hazards first physical first first of all physical hazards you will here see the type of the hazard in each and every subsequent slide so first physical hazard that is heat so because of the heat there can be burns heat exhaustion nowadays heat is also there in because of the summer season heat exhaustion heat stroke heat cramps and indirect effect will lead to decrease decrease in efficiency increase fatigue uh, because of the heat we our fatigue will be there uh, there will be a sense of fatigue early fatigue because of the heat because of this heat we will our efficiency of the work will also decrease it also decreases there will be enhanced accident rate 
so heat itself is a separate topic to be discussed in separate class so burns it you can remember the direct effect burns heat exhaustion heat stroke heat cramps again description of this are uh, uh, covered in separate class so who are at the risk of this physical hazard of the heat agriculture worker because they have to work in the farm fire fighter civil engineer factory worker street sweeper athletes soldiers you know that soldiers are uh, they are carrying out their duty even in the heat of more than 50 degree more than 45 degree centigrade and they are also carrying out their duty in cold of the minus temperature of the ladakh as well as in the heat of the kutch so soldiers are uh, at the risk of the heat as well as at the cold electrical engineer traffic police policeman you, you you frequently find that they are also working in this such a heat of 45 to 42 degree centigrade de uh, temperature welders oil refinery worker cooks all are at the risk of the heat. most commonly agriculture worker soldier this traffic policeman and because of their occupation they have to work in such type of the heat as well as in the cold so cold again cold will lead to chill blind you can see the photograph of the cold and erythrocyanosis immersion food frostbite and particularly the soldiers who are working in the ladakh as well as in the temperature minus degree temperature general hypothermia so because of this there can be chill blind and there can be gangrene there can be gangrene also because of the cold so for cold again who are the risk fishermen people working in the grocery frozen food section frozen the wherever, wherever the there is frozen section is used road construction worker market vendor soldiers during the war oh, apart from the war also not it is not necessary that only during war light again light is physical hazard so there are two types of the hazards in light because of the poor illumination and because of the excessive brightness so poor illumination will lead to eye strain akokechai poor illumination headache eye pain lacrimation congestion around the cornea eye fatigue so if there in industry or any occupation if there is poor illumination poor light then working environment will it is not suitable for the eye it will lead to the eye straining it will lead to the headache and chronic effect of this uh, poor illumination it leads it is minus nystagmus minus nystagmus excessive brightness or glare it can lead to blurring of the vision because of the excessive brightness again blurring of the vision in in industries where excessive brightness is there where light generating operations are being carried out it will lead to the blurring of the vision visual fatigue annoyance annoyance means irritability that is because of the whenever there is sudden throwing of the light over your eyes whatever you feel over the eyes that is annoyance and discomfort so that is light then noise in noise is most important hazard in industry because in many industries uh, operations are there which generate lots of the noise lots of noise so because of the noise there can be auditory effect and non auditory effect so auditory impact include temporary or it can be permanent hearing loss temporary hearing loss or permanent hearing loss because of the non auditory effect there can be nervousness fatigue interference with the communication when we, we can usually feel that uh, whenever we are talking with other person and there is lot of noise suppose there is a train passing through or in jamnagar there is a aircraft passing through frequently on uh, 24 hour on on the daytime particularly so there will be interference in the communication decrease efficiency and annoyance so these are the non auditory effect i am going rapidly th through these hazards because it is this it is also a separate topic which has been covered noise pollution this air pollution all these pollutions and uh, effect of the heat these are covered separately or will be covered if not covered in your theory classes we have to basically basically focus on the models but this is the base for this so for physical hazards or the i mean to, I mean to say this noise uh, work uh, farmer civil engineer construction worker factory worker mining musician and music teacher airline worker the workers who are the ground staff over the airline they have to frequently uh, they are being frequently exposed to the uh, high frequency noise then police soldier pilots these are all at the risk of the noise so you can see in this photograph that uh, uh, this uh, machine generate lots of the noise this machine generate noise as well as second hazard that is vibration vibration and noise is generated by this uh, machine which which cuts the road which helps in making the hole in the roads 
this gun shooters shooters they are also exposed to the noise so you can see that ear muff they have they have weird ear muff this musician they are also at the risk of the noise vibration we have seen previously also in photographs so this machine generated lots of the vibration and it is encountered in the work of the drilling this machine is drilling machine so uh, workers who are at the risk are drill operator chainsaw operator bulldozer driver loader driver people working with the pumps and compressor and this leads to a phenomenon called white fingers because of this vibration there can be spasm of the spasm of the fine capillaries blood vessels and it leads to the vibration this white finger ultraviolet radiation is also an uh, important uh, physical hazard nowadays where arc and other electric welding process are being there see it can lead to severe conjunctivitis and keratitis and because of this radiation there can be welders splice welders you you are uh, familiar of the welders welding industry ionizing radiation is another form of the physical hazard which can lead to genetic change mild formation because of the ultraviolet rays ionizing red cancer leukemia ulceration sterility death so ionizing radiation radioactive caution this is the symbol of the radioactive substance you know about the symbols of the biomedical waste and this is different than this chemical hazard so chemical hazard leads to the three types of the action local action ingest because of the ingestion and because of the inhalation so chemicals like acid like benzene in particularly in uh, refineries this benzene and other chemicals are being frequently used uh, and it can lead to the ex local action that is irritant and sensitizer action and because of the local action uh, over the skin it will lead to dermatitis eczema ulcers and cancer by primary irritant action so these are local action of the chemical inhalation because of this inhalation chemical fume chemical fume may lead to it may it may be in form of the gases that is simple gas it can be expulsion gas that it can lead to asphyxia because of the exposure uh, of the gas which may contain more carbon monoxide it may lead to asphyxia it, it can be having the anesthetic effect also so this dust can be inorganic organic soluble or insoluble metal and other fumes are example of this inhalation ingestion so Uh, this chemical hazards because of the chemical hazard uh, if they are ingested by, by mistaken uh, some of the example of the chemicals which can be mistakenly uh, ingested lead mercury arsenic zinc chromium this different uh, substance different metals uh, it can be ingested it can lead to the poisonous effect so lead poisoning mercury poisoning itself a separate topic to be discussed in theoretical class uh, you may be you may have heard this or you may have learned this in your forensic medicine also nowadays this is the matter of the talk biological hazard you are familiar with this biological hazards and uh, the healthcare provider healthcare workers doctors nurses and they are all exposed to this biological hazard by virtue of their by virtue of their occupation so in healthcare setting uh, you are frequently hearing nowadays this infection corona but apart from the corona all the day all the time they are exposed to the biological hazard suppose for example hepatitis b and c because of the needle stick injury hepatitis b hiv because of the working in tuberculosis opd tb opd there is there is chance of getting tuberculosis h1n1 so all these are biological hazards huh? virus fungi it can include bacteria parasites so to healthcare provider all these types of the hazards are always there always there so again i remember i i remind you the difference between hazard and risk so all these hazards like uh, uh, presence of this infectious organisms are always there exposure to the patients who harbor this infectious organism are always there but we have to minimize the risk so by how to minimize the risk that is by wearing personal protective equipment so we are going to discuss that in second part of our uh, this presentation apart from the healthcare worker some agriculture worker and animal husbandry they are also uh, having the biological hazard in form of the brucellosis leptospirosis anthrax this hydatid this is and tetanus because clostridia tetani are present in the soil so agriculture worker are exposed to that brucellosis why brucellosis because they are uh, handling the animals so it can be transmitted from the animal uh, leptospirosis particularly from the rat 
encephalitis filarial because of the mic mic exposure to this filaria fungal infestation schistosomiasis these are the risk to the these are the hazards sorry not risk hazards to the agriculture worker then mechanical hazard we have discussed about physical hazard chemical hazard biological hazard and mechanical hazard so about 10% of the accident industry are said to be because of the mechanical cause mechanical failure if there is a failure of the machinery if the machinery is old and if if the uh, worker is not uh, used to that machinery that can be chances of the mechanical hazard if you remember some of the movie uh, like pulley in pulley also uh, some industrial worker are uh, have been have been shown to have the mechanical hazard they are, their hands uh, injury to over, over their hands i think in pulley itself and some other movie uh, you 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 can find that so who are at the risk agriculture worker construction worker then this transport worker business establishment so they are at the risk of the mechanical hazard yes psychological hazard in each in every occupation this is always there psychological hazard because of the stress of the work because of the uh, uh, influence of the boss so because of the time it can lead to the effect like frustration lack of job satisfaction insecurity of the job poor human relationship all these are different topic these are to be discussed uh, in uh, if we if we going to be uh, discuss this topic then it will itself take one or two over so i am going rapidly through this emotional tension uh, so because of this there can be psychological and behavioral change effect like psychological behavior. this photograph itself uh, depicts a uh, psychological hazard <clears throat> now what we have to discuss uh, basically that is the, here from here models of occupation they are there the, so we have said that uh, there are two different models of occupation uh, we are going to discuss about the dust and the disease related to that dust and uh, personal protective equipment so starting from here this dust related disease that we are going to see so first for general terminology used for this dust related uh, disease is pneumoconiosis so it includes the two words pneumons and cornea so pneumons is lungs and cornea is dust so it is the group of disease that occur out of the specific occupation caused by inhalation of the insoluble dust here the dust is insoluble so it remains in lung and it will lead to the uh, inflammation it may lead to the a uh, characteristic feature depending upon the dust so and it occurs over a long period of exposure it is not so that once we have inhaled the dust like coal dust or silica dust we will get this uh, disease coal worker pneumoconiosis or silicosis it is if there is a, a long term exposure it can lead to the to the pneumoconiosis <clears throat> so these are commonly known as dust diseases also so what are the factors which uh, lead to this pneumoconiosis there is uh, the factor include concentration of the dust in the air if the high concentration is there it can lead to development of the disease rapidly so again it is similar to the dose of the poison if the poison dose of the poison is more and uh, the poisonous effect will be also more then composition of the dust so the disease uh, caused by silica is different by anthro the, i mean to say this coal is different and coal lead to the anthro anthrocosis this silica lead to silicosis asbestos lead to asbestosis of course they are all affecting lung but uh, there can be some different in uh, uh, gross and microscopic pathology depending upon the exposure of the dust then th third thing is size of the dust particle again it matters then duration of the exposure we have seen that uh, again long term exposure will lead to the development of the disease and individual factors individual susceptibility so as we know that in uh, in in preventive medicine three factors are important agent host and environment so these four factors these four factors are uh, these are related to the agent factor and individual susceptibility that is factor which is related to host so susceptibility of the person if if the person is working more for more duration of the time uh, as well as the his own capacity to cope up with the exposure is low then he will develop this is rapidly
so in dust first model of the dust that is silica dust it can be asked in your spotting right now that from this onward all the pictures which i am going to show you from this slide onward it can be asked in your spotting as well as this can be asked in your viva so this dust are kept on your table viva also they are being also shown in your spotting and based on that questions will be asked so silica dust white powder this such white powder is silica dust so the silica dust lead to the disease called as silicosis the name is very easy to understand so it is also known as grand dust disease because uh, this silica is uh, developed in in case of the grinding grinding in case of the ceramic industry so you know that ceramic industry are more uh, there in morbi so because of the grinding work which is being carried out in ceramic industry it leads to the disease which is known as grinders disease as well as potter's rot another name so it is a common and major disease which, which is most serious that is due to inhalation of the dust containing free silica or silicon dioxide as a quartz free silica or silicon dioxide as a quartz first case of the silicosis was reported in polar mild gold mine in mysore in 1947 the year is uh, year same similar as of uh, independence so in polar gold mine in mysore this first case of the silica silicosis was reported so which are the industries which are the industries where silicosis is more common where the hazard of the silica is more common so mining industry 34% this potters and ceramic industry you know that in gujarat morbi is one of the leading uh, city for the ceramic industry sand blasting uh, you may have seen in many movies that the blasting is very many old movies blasting of the sand particularly to uh, uh, develop the road this blasting is being carried out so that sand blasting metal grinding then building and construction work in urbanization in city area it is being carried out uh, routinely rock mining then iron and steel industry so these are the industries where there is chance of exposure to silica is more so incubation period of the silicosis few months to 6 years clinical feature irritant cup as we know that silica anthracosis all this very affect the lung so whatever the symptoms which are related to respiratory system this will be there like irritant cup dyspnea on exertion loss of weight yes then emphysema pain in the chest and uh, one terminology is there silico tuberculosis so many in many persons there can be tuberculosis which may be present and if they are exposed to silica there can be development of the characteristic x ray feature uh, that is silico tuberculosis so this is the x ray feature you can see that in x ray chest there can be snow storm appearance this is more of medicine part although i am showing over here but it can be useful in your medicine part also in your x mcq also or it can be bowl of wool here bowl of the wool Tip not typically bowl of wool yes you can see this is the bowl of the wool bowl of wool it can be said but this is a typical snow storm appearance you can see that storm of the snow is there like in case of the himalaya such snow storm appearance is here in x ray again this is the model silicotic lung which is kept in our museum you may be shown this photograph also this is the model which is kept in our museum in our department so it is uh, we are providing the facility that you don't have to come to the museum and we are showing you at your home so service at your home so there is no treatment for the silicosis preventive measure includes such type of the dust prevention mask we are going to see again in the pp model dust prevention mask looks similar to somewhat similar to n95 mask so we are apart from this personal protective equipment uh, rigorous dust control measure in form of the substitution complete enclosure where the silica generation operations are carrying out enclosure environment engine this is the method of engineering system see occupational health occupational disease these are a, uh, these are a separate branch of the science there there is a course in occupational disease occupational science like uh, associate fellow in industrial health like uh, diploma courses are there so where all this engineering methods are being taught in detail substitution method enclosure method uh, at ug point of view if you just remember the names 
as well as just meaning of that substitution means by replacing one thing with the another thing here if uh, silica can be replaced by another thing so if possible huh, it, it should be possible it should be feasible complete enclosure if the dust can be enclosed in the environment it can be contained in the environment that is enclosure then isolation <laughs> nowadays you are hearing this word isolation frequently also for the patients uh, who are uh, suffering from this covid so here isolation of what isolation of the uh, work which is being carried out in ceramic industry so isolation of not of not worker here it means of the isolation of the operational work which is carried out is in separate environment it should not be there in the general environment hydroblasting again these are of engineering term good housekeeping and good sanitation it will lead to the decrease in silica dust personal protective equipment in form of using the such mask plus it include regular physical examination of the worker see there is a factory act 1948 and apart from this it had been modified frequently also so in factory act according to factory act uh, there are two types of the examination of the each worker it should be carried out uh, before uh, in industry so before entry that is pre employment examination and in after entry regular periodic checkup it is six monthly biannual regular periodic checkup so two types of the examination pre employment examination and periodic examinations are being carried out so it applies to all prevention preventive measures in all in silicosis in anthracosis in each and every uh, type of the disease second model that is asbestos dust this is asbestos dust so see this photograph very well let me see how many students are there why well, some students have left i am going to demonstrate also about the mask about the mask how to wear it so it will be very interesting so asbestos dust so due to inhalation of the asbestos dust over a long period of time there can be asbestosis so it is the name given to fibrous mineral silicate silica combined with oxygen and other element like calcium so in industry like asbestos cement factory fire cook textile roof tilting break lining all this industry in which asbestos is asbestos is more uh, in ship wrapping also perhaps uh, asbestos is generated more so in there also asbestos is can be there so this is the typical feature of uh, x ray picture of uh, asbestos is ground glass appearance in lower two third of the uh, lung there can be ground glass appearance of the lung it is being seen as well as in sputum in sputum examination asbestos bodies can be seen asbestos bodies can be seen so preventive measure include use of safer type of the asbestos there are different types of the asbestos this is again not a medical science so uh, cresolite and this emosite these are safer type of the asbestos which can be used in this such industries substitution with the other insulators uh, if possible like glass fiber mineral wool calcium silicate plastic form The rigorous dust control measure, periodic examination, protective equipment. We already know in health education. We already know about this. Third model is coal dust. Coal dust. You can see this photograph. See this photograph very well. Coal dust. Coal dust. Okay. By that time, uh, let me ask one question. In general, you can write. We have discussed some of the disease. In general, you can write down in chat box. what are the different what are the different uh, preventive measures of pneumoconiosis in general up to now what we have discussed what are different preventive measures for pneumoconiosis for the dust generating disease for the disease caused by dust write down in chat box write down preventive measures in chat box preventive measures for pneumoconiosis it is based on discussion till now yes wearing mask i am getting reply wearing mask then wearing dust protective mask so that is one part that is using personal protective equipment apart from personal protective equipment we have discussed so many preventive measures enclosure yes enclosure containment of the area you are now familiar with this word containment 
बिकॉज ऑफ द कोविड सिफ्टिंग ऑफ द ड्यूटी ऑफ द वर्कर यस वेरी नाइस सो ड्यूटीज ऑफ वर्कर शुड बी सच अरेंज दैट दे शुड हैव मिनिमम एक्सपोजर टू द हजार्ड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेर एवर द नॉइज जनरेटिंग इंडस्ट्री इज देयर सो वर्कर्स कैन बी रोटेटेड बिटवीन द नॉइज जनरेटिंग एरिया एज वेल एज नॉइज नॉन जनरेटिंग एरिया सो एंड ड्यूटीज ऑफ द वर्कर इन नॉइज जनरेशन एरिया शुड बी कैप्ट फॉर मिनिमम ड्यूरेशन टू मिनिमाइज द एक्सपोजर substitution washing area of the skin with some contact of the dust yes very nice okay so now we are going uh, further coal dust and as you know that this coal dust it can be shown you again in your uh, viva as well as in your spotting it can it leads to anthracosis or the na name of the disease is coal workers pneumoconiosis or miners black lung miners black lung again i am going to show you one photograph which is there in museum so this is anthracotic lung this is anthracotic lung which is kept model is kept in our museum so due to inhalation of the coal dust over a long period of time anthracosis there can then be there it can it can uh, there are two types of anthracosis simple pneumoconiosis as well as progressive massive fibrosis so detail about the pathology of the disease you will uh, learn in pathology as well as in medicine as well as in your theory class Uh, diagnosis of the anthracosis it can be again by feature there can be multiple nodular densities multiple nodular densities it is known as black lung black lung again so can you remember the feature of uh, x ray feature of the silica lung because of the silicosis what is the x ray feature of the silicosis we have just discussed write down in chat box x ray feature of silicosis we have just discuss about it snow storm appearance yes very nice snow storm appearance okay so this is model of anthracotic lung yes now another dust we have till discussed about silica asbestos this coal now cotton dust uh you may have seen such type of the work which is going out in cotton industry you know that uh, saurashtra gujarat and particularly saurashtra it is the major producer of the cotton uh, in in gujarati what we call it is kala if you have seen in the road side that uh, from this uh, cotton is obtained and uh, there are ginning and pressing industries uh, there are in, in saurashtra particularly in junagadh district uh, one, one one city one uh, town is there Uh, which was the considered previously in past which was considered as the uh, largest uh, having the largest number of the gin and the town name of the town that is that where i belong to that is manavadar where uh, more than 300 gin were there in single town and i have seen all such type of the exposures i have seen such type of the work going out in the gin so uh, first what happens why this cotton dust exposure how this cotton dust exposure happen so it uh, there are the ginning so the work i'm going to show you the, with the help of the photograph you can see that workers are working in gin this is the this is the machine pressing machine this is called the pressing machine where workers have to apply this cotton as well as in uh, outside there are uh, lots of the cotton and uh, workers have to work amongst the cotton you can see in this photograph that worker is amongst the cotton when we were ch children we were also used to work in this uh, cotton so i am i have seen this a lot of the cotton work going in the ginning industry so because of this cotton dust there can be disease that is bisinosis the disease is bisinosis again this photographs you show you that uh, worker is exposed to the cotton so due to inhalation of the cotton dust over a longer period of the time this sinusis can occur it is the also named as monday fever monday fever it is also common in textile industry in india 35% workers in the textile industry are exposed to that incidence is 7 to 8% and uh, so this prevention of the bisinosis for the prevention of the bisinosis you can see that here in photograph workers have not worn any personal protective equipment some of the workers may be using their own cloth as a personal protective equipment 
apart now the bagas osis another disease is bagas osis so it is because of the bagas that is in sugar dust present in sugar dust inhalation of the cane so sugar factories you know that uh, in sugar uh, it is made sugar is made from uh, our uh, uh, what we call in gujarati it is sardi i don't know the english name so from that this sugar is made as well as jaggery is made so jag while making this jaggery and sugar uh, workers may be exposed to this sugar dust as well as agriculture workers who are working in the farms of this uh, sugar cane so they may be also uh, exposed to this bagas so while making paper cardboard some of the paper and cardboard can be made from the remnant of this uh, sugar cane after this it has been used for to make uh, sugar cane has been used to make the sugar as well as jaggery some of the remnant can be used to make the paper as well as cardboard as well as in rayon factory you may be remembering the veraval where rayon factories are there rayon industry are there so first reported case of the uh, bagasosis was in kolkata by ganguly he is not saurav ganguly just ganguly here in kolkata each and every ganguly are not saurav ganguly and pal in cardboard factory in 1955 there can be presence of fungi in this sugarcane thermi thermoactinomyces sacri it can lead to this bagasosis so x ray feature of the bagasosis mottling appearance in lung field which is more useful in your medicine part so preventive measure again these are same dust control personal protection medical control and bagas control some of the other disease which are related to our topic farmers lung uh, this is because of the exposure to the moldy hay as well as grain dust uh, presence of this bacteria thermophilic actinomycetes which are the main cause see this can be asked in your mcq thermophilic actinomycetes this may lead to formal lung so it can lead to two types of the disease bronchial asthma and repeated attack some of the student have replied uh, initially that bronchial asthma is also an occupational disease yes here in because of the formal lung it can be there otherwise it is also non occupational disease repeated so diagnosis because it find nodular density in the lung can be found in farmers lung another topic is lead poisoning you will learn about the lead in your forensic medicine as well as in theory class lead is also a common uh, metal toxic metal which is used in many industries and uh, there are different compound lead arsenate lead carbonate lead dioxide so lead is used in mines as well as in lead ores manufacturing of the storage batteries you know that uh, batteries uh, were ex- you, you you may have heard of a common name excite battery uh, or such type of the batteries which are also using that lead uh, glass manufacturing printing potteries and uh, rubber industry ship building plumbing work all these are the occupational uh, area where lead exposure can be there Uh, some of the non occupational area gasoline leaded petrol the drinking water the, the presence of the lead can be there in drink water also fruits and vegetables because of the use of the insecticide uh, children because of the eating habit of the pica that is eating silly eating that uh, sand then chewing uh, lead paint in paint also there can be presence of the lead lead pencils so because of such type of the habit as well as because of our uh, exposure to the fruits and vegetables yeah. it can be non occupational source of the lead poisoning clinical feature of the lead poisoning you know very well a b c d you can remember like a b c d e f g h so from a to uh, w some of the letter may be missing uh, anemia blue line on the gums colic abdominal pain diarrhea encephalopathy fatigue growth failure among the children headache irritability joint pain you can remember like that so this case, that will be covered in your theory class separately also occupational cancer are also common nowadays and uh, this include ma- mainly skin cancer lung cancer cancer of the bladder and leukemia so you can see the photograph of this occupational dermatitis that can be a precancerous lesion so causes of occupational dermatitis this can be physical chemical biological plant products we have, we have discussed again the photograph some of the photographs of the skin disease because of the exposure to uh, because of the occupational exposure occupational dermatitis and which may lead to cancer vitiligo you can see over here 
radiation hazard so radiologist x ray technician they are also at the hazard of the radiation and worker at the mining field nuclear power power plant operator uh, you may have seen that movie parmano where nuclear blast was carried out uh, so routinely who are the work, uh, work exposed at the nuclear power plant they are also at the hazard of the radiation aircraft worker luminous dial painter so because of the radiation there can be active burn dermatitis and all these features genetic effect can be there malignancies can be there of the particularly lung cancer accidents in industry they are also common in coal and as well as in mining industry and this is incidence rate accident rate is 0.14 per 1000 works per year so now another part of our uh, models on occupation that is personal protective equipment again i remind you there are two types of the, of the model which are being frequently asked in your practical exam one is models which is there as a dust we have discussed about silica asbestos coal then this bagas so this models can be shown in your spotting and personal protective equipment these are again another types of the model so particularly which are being used in industry we are going to discuss on uh, focus on that and uh, apart from that on hospital setting also ear map so such type of the ear map you have seen first personal treatment is ear map so that is designed to cover the person's ear for protection and it is consisting of the thermoplastic or metal head you can see this metal this can be plastic more commonly it is thermoplastic and which fits over the top or back of the head again uh, it should uh, be padded here you can see that it is padded to avoid the irritation and to give the better fitment as well as to protect uh, from the noise so it will can cover the external ears fully so that is ear muff and uh, some of the ear muffs are such designed that uh, they are in the form of the headphone so along with the work music can be also heard with uh, through the bluetooth connection or through uh, connection with the wire so ear muff are designed to provide protection against noise so that is the use and guideline for the use ear muff can must be fully enclose the user's ear there should not be any leaking between user's ear and this ear muff otherwise there it is of no use it should not rest on the user's ear so resting part it should be over the head it should be well supported over the head and headband should be adjusted so that the comfortably so it is this headband is flexible so according to the size of the head uh, it it fits to each and every person long hair should be pulled back to ensure the best possible seal then second part in noise to prevent the noise pollution is ear plug so remember the difference between ear muff this is ear muff like a headphone and this is ear muff so this is disposable ear plug along with ear uh, so this ear plug it is also preventing the hearing loss and uh, it should be just inserted into the ear canal and uh, taking care that, take care that it should not go into the deeper part of the canal so well the permissible exposure limit of the noise is exceeded such type of the ear plug and ear muff can be used so it should be worn ear protector hearing protector should be worn at all the times when exposed to the loud noise and this should be worn properly so uh, to give the better effect for the prevention of the noise pollution it should be worn throughout the uh, employment while working into the uh this noise pollution area so again another type of the ear plug is shown over here reusable ear plug is there previously were disposable ear plug once it has been used it should be disposed and this is reusable ear plug so it can be this reusable ear plug can be washed with the soap and water every day to keep it clean and uh, as you know that in ear canal there is generation of the wax so this wax may be cleaned with the help of the water every day ear plug are more comfortable than the ear muff so it is depends upon the person again some of the person may be comfortable with the ear muff some may be comfortable with the ear plug so ear muff are not needed unless the noise level exceed 100 decibel where both ear muff and ear plug are to be worn now second another uh, type is gloves so most frequently you are exposed to this gloves you may be in hospital setting also gloves are being used so it should be worn by every industrial worker there are different types of the gloves i am going to show you 
it protect and give the comfort to the hands against the cold as well as heat and by friction from abrasion from chemical so uh, physical hazards against chemical hazard these gloves are going to give protection it is made up of the material including cloth it can be knitted also it can be wool also leather rubber so welder also use this glove to pro for the protection against the electric shock extreme heat ultraviolet and infrared rays so we are going to see the type of the gloves so this is the leather hand gloves this is the photograph of the leather hand gloves it can be used in driving driving it is not comfortable but in case of the winter in, in dress in police as well as in uh, some industries where it can be permitted electric hand gloves these are the electric hand gloves which is going to uh, give protection against the electric shock electric walls so uh, while working in, uh, in uh, operations way which there is, there is a electric is a hazard electricity is the hazard this type of the electric high quality gloves can be used then disposable gloves you are familiar with the such type of the gloves which is there in hospital industry also it is made up of the latex vinyl and nitrile can be used by medical and paramedical person also then this type of the cotton gloves it assist in the absorption of the hand cream and ointment not routinely used this cotton gloves most commonly such type of the leather this leather gloves this electric gloves and this type of the disposable gloves these are most commonly used types of the gloves then gum boot you can see the photograph of the gum boot so another name of this gum boot gum shoes it can be also called as top boots or rubber wellington boots another name is rubber wellington boot so it is for fit and made from the rubber or pvc rubber or polyvinyl chloride it is used in chemical industry to protect the fit against the spillage of the chemical you know that while working in uh, with the chemicals there can be spillage like if the spillage of the acid is there over the fit and if it is exposed there can be burns so such type of the gum boot it gives protections against the such spillage uh, while working in uh, flooded area you may have seen that in flooded area in, in in our news channels in some movies also some soldiers who are working in uh, this flood they are also using this flood this type of the gum boot during incineration process also so in uh, west by particular in biomedical west treatment incineration is one of the uh, treatment protocol so while uh, you, uh, having this incineration the man who is carrying out this incineration operation is using uh, personal protective equipment in form of the helmet in form of the uh, this uh, uh, leather gloves and gum boot is one of the also personal protective equipment in while working with the incineration during snow mountaineering yes yeah, some of you may have experienced the trekking so in trekking in snow mountaineering uh, some of the personal protective equipments the list of the personal protective equipments are given so what we could the poncho something like that poncho and this uh, trekking write down in chat box what does we uh, we call it uh, appropriately poncho or something like that you might you have experienced this uh, trekking so list down the uh, personal protective equipment which are being used in trekking write down in chat box write in chat box what are the personal protective equipment which are being used in trekking we are moving further while well, i am uh, waiting for your reply so safety shoes these are also uh, used in working with the heavy objects such as barrels or tools uh, there, to prevent the injury from the tools from the barrels it is made up of the metal iron so this type of the safety shoes remember that this there is difference between this gum boot this gum boot and safety shoes safety shoes gives protection against the heavy object prevent injury from the heavy object when they may roll upon or fall upon the worker speed so working with the sharp objects such as nail spike it can also pierce the sole so to avoid injury from the sharp objects is the type of the safety shoes are being used exposure to molten metals working on on uh, uh, around the hot or wet slippery surface or with electrical hazards this type of this safety shoes can be used so let me see that whether you have answered or not sunglasses some some student has answered sunglasses only sunglasses such type of the gum boots as well as this poncho can be also used okay you can find out it later on so uh, one or two now one or two points are remaining uh, mask 
so most commonly nowadays it is the matter of talk again mask so it acts as a barrier between infectious material and skin mouth nose and eyes so mask can be using the as a barrier between infectious material as well as in industry where dust generation is there so in that also mask is very much useful it should be used properly personal protective equipment can prevent the spread of the infection from one person to another so proper use of mask and there are so many videos i'm going to again demonstrate you in front of you also how to use the mask so it will also prevent so proper use of the mask is necessary to prevent the uh, infections particularly nowadays covid so very fine aerosol or respirable dust may cause the respiratory tract infection lung irritation uh, this this is it, uh, it can prevent the asbestosis as well as silicosis also in some of the previous photograph you have seen that uh, workers are working in this industry with the help with uh, while using the mask it can also protect from the metal dust and fume so different types of the mask are there most commonly you have you are wearing nowadays is surgical mask this is the surgical mask used in hospital most commonly in hospital and in some of the some of the industry so in surgical there is a proper technique of the using surgical mask first of all you can see that in this surgical mask this is white nozzle nasal clip this is the upper part of the mask this is the upper part of the mask and uh, in mask you can see that there are two different surfaces outer surface is dark blue it is dark outer surface is dark while inner surface is light so uh, i'm going to demonstrate in front of the you in front of you so this is surgical mask you can see that there is nasal clip over here and this outer surface it may not be visible uh, clearly in video but uh, you can if you have mask you can see clearly it is dark and this inner surface it is light it is, yes it is seen in video yes this is this outer surface is dark and this inner surface is light so outer surface it is anti absorbent it is anti absorbent so it does not allow any infectious material to be absorbed and inner surface which is absorbent it is absorbent so whenever the person coughs or sneak sneeze so this inner surface will absorb the infectious material into inner part while outer surface it will not allow uh, other person's cough to be absorbed so this nasal clip should be worn upward so this mask can be applied like this and this nasal clip it should be fitted it should be fitted this mask should be fully open and we have to blow we have to blow to check to whether there is any leaking of the air or not whether there is leaking of the air or not so it can be checked with the help of this blow and and there is also proper method of uh, removing the mask removing the mask now before removing uh, while working with this mask we should not touch this surface actually this is for demonstration so i am touching it i am not going to use it for other purpose so uh, frequently we should not touch this surface because it contains the potential hazard in form of the infectious uh, material virus bacteria so if we touch the, over this uh, surface this virus can be there in our hands and it we will, we will be applying the, that hand over our face to other person also so it is of no use it is of no use so it should be worn properly it should not be touched as well as uh, if it becomes wet then it is of no use so it should be removed it can be useful for 4 to 6 hour depending upon the work and if it becomes wet it should be removed so while removing only we have to touch the string only we have to touch the string and then by holding the string it should be it should be uh, disposed into the yellow bag so that is the proper method of uh, wearing as well as removing the mask what we call as donning and doffing this is called as donning and doffing so again so this is the surgical mask another type of the mask that is this is dust mask looks like similar to the n95 mask but it is dust mask when we inhale the air is pull, pulled through the mask and dust is captured into the outside of the so, air can be pulled that is needed for the inhalation but dust can be kept captured outside the mask it must fit properly to prevent the leakage around the edges i have already demonstrated that leakage should be checked and exposure it can be used where exposure to chemical gas or vapor is there 
or if the dust level are more than 10 times the permissible limit or oxygen deficiency even if there is oxygen deficiency the inhalation becomes difficult and because of the mass application of the mass inhalation become difficult if there is chemical gas or vapor again there is oxygen there can be low level of the oxygen and can become uh, difficult to inhale through this mass so it cannot be used n95 mass most commonly used such uh, you can see this photograph so workers health workers who are working in the potential uh, risk of the uh, exposure where infectious material is the potential risk like in uh, like here in case of the corona in covid 19 wards in covid 19 opd uh, in uh, isolation ward particularly they have to use this n95 mask to prevent the respiratory infection like h1n1 like corona etc again there is a method of uh, using this n95 mask there is a method of using such n95 mask that i am going to demonstrate so this is n95 mask you can see this this is n95 mask and there are two strings there are two strings in n95 mask and this is outer surface of the n95 mask which is having the this nozzle clip this is respira respirator and this is inner surface of the mask so we have to first we have to first uh, keep these strings the string which is at the downward area which should be kept upward so the, sorry upward the, the, the string which is there in downward area it can be kept upward or vice versa whatever you feel comfortable and this can be applied like this the string should be pulled with the head and this string can be pulled first string should be brought below the ear and the second string it can be kept above the ear above the ear and nozzle clips should be fitted again we have to blow to check the leakage or if we keep the uh, string just we have exposed uh, we have kept uh, in over the head in vice versa manner that is if we keep this upper string downward and lower string upward and then we have to pull this uh, upper string then there cannot that, that cross what we have observed that that will be not there so that is proper wearing as well as uh, while removing we should not touch the outer surface we should not touch only we have to dispose it while uh, catching the strings only we have to catch the strings another type of the so this was n95 mask so three masks we have seen n95 this dust mask and surgical mask apart from this cloth mask and other masks are also available safety goggles you can see this type of the safety goggles which are worn in industry uh, it is also protecting it is protecting eyes from physical and chemical agent and is the first level of the prevention for the eye there are three different types of the goggle direct vented indirect vented and non vented direct vented so when it provides ventilation again you can see that allow a direct flow of the air so here in case of the direct vented it allows direct direct flow of the air over the face area where eyes is eyes are there indirect vented so it it provide the protection of the splash from the entry of the hooded uh, or covered vent which allows the free movement of the air so again indirect it indirectly provide the air so this is directly it is a different the goggles which provide direct entry of the air is direct vented and the goggles which provide indirect entry of the air that is indirect vented so indirect vented pro provide protection against the splash entry and non vented have no venting of any kind it provides protection against the passage of the dust as well mist and liquid and vapor so where chemical vapor is hazard this type of the non vented goggles can be used safety helmet you have seen such type of the use of the helmet by engineers by workers who are there in construction site so construction and worker that clearly uh, no person shall enter the construction without any suitable safety helmet uh, helmet was also talk of the town in some months or some uh, one year back when there were traffic regulations compulsory helmet wearing 
in other places where there is a risk of the falling object in worker must also carry out the very uh, wear the hel safety helmet so safety helmet is necessary in uh, in case of the industry work as well as during uh, driving two wheeler also so that attempt to protect the user's head by absorbing mechanical energy so uh, whatever the uh, great quality helmets are there these are tested by the isi by this uh, uh, mechanical energy so that can absorb the mechanical energy and prevent the head injury so there should be some uh, uh, maintenance this helmet should be maintained properly also we must not uh, uh, clean with the clean the helmet with the organic solvent it can be killed with clean with the, only water depending upon the type of the material helmet is there uh, we should not use, drill the hole into the helmet uh, paint or we should not use them when they are damaged or we should not throw them while coming to the home the helmets cannot not be thrown otherwise it can be damaged and it can it can there it, it will be no longer protective or we are this helmet with the head yeah. now many times we we are the head and then we keep the helmet so it is not also proper method of wearing the safety helmet welding shield so this type of this welding shield in uh, you have seen that welders are using and to uh, protect their eyes as well as their head you know, from the flashes of the as well as from burn as well as from ultraviolet rays and infrared uh, light so these are having the advantage of prevention of the uh, eye from injury by flash as well as from light so thank you very much that is all about models of occupation that is all about this again i remind you that this dust models and this models of personal protective equipment it can be asked in your exam it can be asked in your exam is there any question i'm waiting for your questions are there any questions i will be giving you a google form assignment based on this class also and in your journal those who are attending for practical class so in your journal you can write down this uh, models of the dust and models of the occupation from this presentation also are there any questions any questions or any feedback from your side i am waiting for any questions or feedback from your side okay thank you very much we are ending this